my name's Jen Hall and I'm here today to help everybody with niching their way to success. So if you haven't heard of me before, I'm known as the Life Buddy and I specialise in helping you to niche down your business and find clarity on your ideal client. That is my kind of zone of genius and, and, and where I like to work best. Um, it really excites me in helping people with this because it really gets people in touch with their passions and what it really is that they want to help people with and really getting alignment on that because I would say probably 80 to 90 percent of us when we decide to coach we find that out before we actually realize what it is that we want to coach in and so it's so important when you're on this journey to actually work out and really fine-tune what it is you're going to help people with because everybody is nobody in business you really do have to know who it is you're targeting and I'm going to put myself out there and say not even just for marketing purposes it's also for alignment because when you really find the niche that hits that button that makes your heart sing that passion shines through in every single thing that you do so it's vital that you niche down and work out what it is that you that, that what your zone of genius is what you love to help people with and it doesn't mean that you can't help people in other areas it doesn't mean that people won't um, sort of come in from the sidelines when it, you don't they don't fit that exact ideal client that you've laid out um, but it does give you the opportunity to start targeting people because as soon as you start talking to more than one person that that is when your message gets diluted and what we don't want and I know that's probably what Sophia has been um, talking to you all about throughout this program is about making sure that you have a really strong message and that you know exactly who it is that you're speaking to and so when you're writing your content or putting anything out there it's vital that you speak to one person and we can't do that unless we understand what our niche is and what it is exactly that we're helping with um, just before I continue any, any longer I just want to mention that at the end of this um, webinar, you can ask questions. So anything that you think of throughout, do just pop them down um, on a notepad and then ask me at the end. So um, why is it so important, important to niche? It's important, as I mentioned, for alignment with your purpose and your passion. We're all here and we're all, you know, we're all born to do a job. Um, and we all value things in life more than others. So due to our own life experiences and what we've gone through in our own journeys, we would have decided what it is that we want from life. And really, our motives in life, our final motive is to feel good. So a coach's job or a trainer's job or whatever it is, is to get you from one stage to another, to get you to the point of helping your clients achieve a goal, okay? And whatever goal that is, it's because the client wants to get there. They want to do it. They value that goal so much so that they will hand over money for it. Now, if they're not willing to hand over money for it, then there's something wrong with your niche or there's something wrong with the ideal client that you're targeting because your ideal client must be in a position to be ready to make a change. There's no point shouting and screaming at people about something you're passionate about when they couldn't care less. You see this a lot, for instance, in the health industry and a lot of health coaches, when they jump up and down and rave and go, your health is really important, your health is really important. There's no point talking to the people who don't value their health. You need to be speaking to the people who do value their health. And, and instead of convincing your clients, you're actually helping them get to where they want to go rather than dragging them, kicking and screaming. Same goes for things like, helping people out of a nine till five there's a difference between trying to convince someone that they should come out of corporate because it's like this freeing amazing experience and actually targeting people who have already made that decision or already to jump out because they've started to research and they know that it's time for a change so make sure that when you're mentally creating a picture of your ideal client that you know exactly at what point it is that they're, that they're at and that you're not trying to convince anybody that you're actually just trying to help them solve their problem and really that's all we're trying to do and the foundations of a solid business of any business but particularly in coaching is working out 
who it is you want to help and what you are helping them with. Once you really have that cracked down, that is when your business will skyrocket. Okay, but helping them as a jack of all trades really doesn't help. It dilutes your messaging, it dilutes everything about you, and it doesn't build trust. If I was to say, um, you know, I'm a life coach, okay, so for instance, this hypothetical, hypothetically speaking, so I'm a life coach, and I can help you with. Um, issues within your business, I don't know, to, to get you to a certain financial goal, okay? But I can also help you if you're having relationship issues. That completely drops your trust. Nobody is going to trust you to help them with it or with either thing because you're not specializing anything. You're not being the expert. And the only way to position yourself as an expert is to specialize, to be an expert in something. Being an expert in business health, whatever it is, isn't enough. We really need to fine tune down and work out what it is exactly you are helping your clients to do. And like I said, it doesn't mean that you can't help them with the wider aspects. So for instance, my thing is clarity. Um, I love to help people find clarity on their purpose, passion, niche and ideal client. But I know I can also help them with their sales. It doesn't mean you, you can't help them with other areas, but it does mean that people get to know you for one particular thing. It's that stickiness, the memorability of where you're going to go. What are you going to be known for for the rest of this year? Really start to fine tune and work out what that one thing is that you want to be known for. So I'm just going to check my notes to make sure I'm on track and I'm giving you everything that I need to give you with. So... I've talked about, you know, you're diluting your message, but not only are you diluting your message, you're also diluting your skill set. Because when you don't decide what it is that you want to be known for, what you want to be an expert in, you don't know where to push forward in terms of looking at your um your further learning where are you going to continue to specialize in and focus everything down in because you know one minute this training's popping up for sales you're like all over that the next minute training's um, popping up for I don't know achieving goals and you're all over that you know what is it that you want to be known for so you can focus down your studies and your skills because we're always evolving and learning so we really need to work out what it is that you are going to be focusing on you know for the, for the rest of this year and if that just helps because a lot of people get this stuck in this oh I picked a niche and I'm going to have to stay with it for absolutely ever that's not the case and your niche will never stay stagnant because you are constantly evolving niching is a is an evolution you will be changing as you go and you will be pulling your clients with you as well they will also your following will also be up leveling as you up level as a coach and so it's really important to not get stuck in this oh I need to pick the right one because I've got to pick it forever and that's it and if I pick this this will be it and what happens if it gets boring and you get stuck in this cycle and not making a decision on what you want to do is no man's land and when you're in no man's land nothing ever gets done it's all Almost, I try and use this analogy of the decision coin. When you sort of say, okay, I could do this or this, and you flip the coin, it comes up. If it's the one you wanted, then it's going to feel good, and you're going to be like, right, that's great. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do anyway. If it flips on the wrong one, you're instantly going to feel it inside of your body and go, that wasn't what I wanted. So at least it's helping you make a decision. So even if you start moving in a direction and it doesn't feel good, you can always change. It's your business. It's your life. You're in control. You're in the driver's seat. You decide what you want to do and which direction you want to take. But you must take a direction at some point. There's no point sitting there not making a decision because you're never going to learn unless you start doing so start making progress in a direction and the thing I would say about not feeling good when you start in a certain direction it's identifying if it's one of these two things if you start moving in a direction towards a niche and it doesn't feel good identify whether that's a fear if it's a fear of um you know, not having the expertise, not knowing what you're doing, um, or whatever that might be, then that is not a reason to change direction. If it's to do with the fact that you don't feel passionate and you don't feel like it feels good in you and actually it does bore you or it just doesn't feel right, or, you know, for instance, I'll give you um, uh, an example, my own example. So when I first started to niche, I started heading in the direction of, um, 
nine to fives and helping people out of their nine to fives to create businesses. And then halfway through, just something just wasn't feeling right. I couldn't put my finger on it. And the reason being is because I'd already moved from a business I was dispassionate about. And I was helping people create businesses that would create glass ceilings on their finances and on their freedom. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to help people create and, and, you know, come out of their corporate and create more walls that they can sit in on their own. It made no sense to me. And it took me a while to get that clarity, but I could only get that clarity once I started to move in that direction. I would never have known that had I not just tried it and seen, okay? So don't get caught up on, oh, well, I've got to pick this now and it's forever more. You know, just make a decision, just see where it feels good to go and identify whether it's that fear or whether it's just that you feel dis dispassionate about it. Okay? So when you do decide to niche, when you do pick your expertise, all of these amazing things are going to happen, okay? You do become an expert in your field and you instantly build credibility and trust with your audience because they know you for a particular thing. It makes it very easy for them to identify and know whether they're your ideal client or not. Nobody's sitting on the fence going, oh, I don't know, can you help me, can't you? They know exactly whether you can or can't. And we need to let go of this fear of people going, oh, well, you're not my ideal client, see you later. You know, I'm not your ideal client, I'll see you later because if they're not they're not that they, there is no lack there is there are plenty of clients out there for everybody and some will resonate with you more than others so again don't get caught up in causing polarity when you start getting that love-hate relationship fabulous that's brilliant amazing that's actually what you want people will either love you or hate you like marmite because they are very clear-cut and know exactly who you know who they're working with and what they want to work with you for so it does build that trust so when you do niche and you do understand your ideal client and i'll give you a little secret here and something um i'm gonna sort of give credit to sanai for your ideal client is you it was you at some point in your life and it depends on where you want to pick that ideal client up from you know you were a hundred different ideal clients at some point in your life but where is it along the timeline of your journey that you want to help someone get from a to b from where was the area of triumph where where was it that things had to change where was the crunch point in your life and you probably had a few of these so what is the most what is is of most value to you everybody wants to feel good and so what is it that your ideal client i.e secret you what is it that they value most in their lives what do they want out of life so it's really important to look at that to decide what it is they want, what's that golden carrot that you're going to dangle in front of them and go, I've got the key to whatever it is that you want. They will then be, you know, feel like they want to hand over money for that. Okay. It's great with all the fluffiness and having your passionate why and understanding why it is you want to do, do what you want to do. That is essential. Without that, there, you know, you, you don't have a business. You have to have your passionate why, which is why I was talking about alignment with your niche. But without your vehicle, without that golden carrot, that tangible experience, the tangible result that they will get, the clear cut result that they will get, no one's going to hand over any money. When you just keep talking about your passionate why all the time and how it's great for this and great for that, it's really, really important that you describe what it is you're actually going to get for them because everyone goes, oh, that's really lovely. That's such a great vision. That's such a great passionate why. But what am I getting from you? It needs to be understood and you need to be able to communicate that clearly with them. So that's why there are two parts to an issue. You've got your, your fluffy, passionate why, which is equally as important. And you've got your solid vehicle that you'll be using to take your client that tangible result. And this is the other thing is that we're not selling coaching. We're selling the outcome, which is why the niching is so important, because it's all to do with the outcome that you're going to be giving. So your marketing becomes so, so easy when you niche because you're spending 80% of your time marketing, or you should be, and if you're not targeting your marketing effectively, then you're essentially wasting 80% of your time. No one wants that. So it's so important to start understanding who it is that you're speaking to so that you can target your marketing effectively. Um, yeah, otherwise it is just a complete waste of time. Um, it leverages you apart from the competition. It's not about being above anybody. It just sections you out. 
But the other thing I will say to that is no matter how much you niche, how much you micro niche and really whittle it down, it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, there will be somebody down the road doing something similar to you. You really cannot help that. You cannot help that someone's going to be doing the same thing. I just noticed someone's popped on. Um, it's fab that you've come on. Would you mind just muting yourself? I can hear some background noise. Excellent. I think is it glory oh brilliant okay so there's going to be somebody down the road who is going to be doing the same thing as you and at the end of the day that can't be helped but you mustn't be fearful of that because everybody is unique in their own individual way everybody will resonate with you for different reasons okay your story sets you apart from other people your brand values set you apart from other people um, your personality the way you come across all of that people will identify with you for different reasons so don't get stuck into this fear of there's not enough to go about because there are plenty of clients to go around um, and there's plenty of work to go around so you know stay in your lane do your thing and don't worry about what everyone else is doing but on the whole it really does set you apart from the crowd um, because this whole thing oh, I'm a health coach I'm a business coach I'm a life coach it really isn't enough don't ever get caught up in a name sometimes it helps just to describe what it is you help your clients with rather than say I am a because then we can really understand what it is you're actually getting for people just a little tip there um, you can easily identify your unique selling points when you niche you you know you can really get to the nitty-gritty of what it is you help people I'm sorry something I missed off earlier I didn't go into it in, in depth enough was about your ideal client that we can really get to know them because they were us at some point in our lives we can really get to know them at such a you know a, a nitty-gritty level in terms of what's going on for them you know how is it impacting you know their lives how is it impacting their relationships all of these different things that are happening and going on for them you really understand them because you have been there and so you know in terms of I've been there done that got the t-shirt that is the best credibility you will ever have with your client because they will know exactly what it is that you know that you understand them and their position and where they're at and that they've seen that you've got to where you are they want that they aspire to be you and in terms of selling people generally buy for, for three for three reasons they're buying for, you know emotionally for fear of missing out or because they're you know aspirational speaking and as coaches quite a lot of the time they want to come with you because they're aspiring to do what you've done or be what you know be who you are or achieve whatever it's success it is that you've you know you've found so also the last I would say the last benefit of niching is also getting referrals so because everybody else knows what you're doing they know what you're doing other coaches know what you're doing it makes it very easy for other coaches and for other people who might not be your ideal client to refer other people on and equally just as a tip here if you everybody any ever get anybody that comes through your door which you you know deep down you're not a perfect match for refer them to somebody else who is because they will remember you for that moment they will be grateful the fact that you were honest with them that builds integrity and it builds trust so refer people on to other people who are better equipped it doesn't mean that you know they are a better coach it's just that their expertise their niche is in a slightly better area than yours they will remember that and they will come back to you most likely when it when you know when they do evolve to be your ideal client okay or they might know somebody else again so you know i know this coach has helped me with this but this other coach who was helping with this referred to me she looked great i think she's perfect for you so everybody knows what each other's doing when we're when we've niched when we become an expert it makes it very easy for referrals and you know word of mouth and referrals are one of the best marketing tools you can ever have it's the same as having a testimonial someone going hey I know this great person you really should go with them having that third party um, you know review and referral is invaluable so don't ever underestimate that now the other thing I would mention about niching is that um, and it was this was a huge thing for me you can get really caught up in the investment that you've given to something and you 
you know, if you've been in coaching for a while or you've been, co not perhaps not coaching, but you've been in a certain industry for a while or you've studied for a very long time or you've plowed a lot of money into something in a direction that isn't necessarily for you, we can find it really hard to cut the cord. We get caught up with, oh, I've spent all of this money and I've spent all of this time, this effort, and this blood, sweat and tears. I can't change now. Well, if you do that, you are going to be so dispassionate about what you're doing. If you're not willing to cut the cord and just say, hey, this isn't for me. Yes, I've spent a lot of money, time and effort. But if I continue in this unhappy place, you are energetically going to be feeling bad. You are not going to be passionate about what you're doing. And therefore, that equals zero clients. So it does not benefit you in the slightest to stay doing what you're doing just because you've invested a lot of time, effort and money into it. You have to be willing to make the change and make the move and start afresh. And I can tell you from personal experience, yes, it's scary. Yes, it's a hard decision. But once you do it, oh my God, the relief of just letting go of all of that crap that you've been hoarding and decluttering everything it just feels amazing so please trust me on this it is hard I've done it myself um, I was in a business for five years in holistics and you know I was trying to merge this coaching business on the side to like trying to shoehorn it in and hammer it on and it just wasn't working because that wasn't where my passion was that wasn't what I wanted to help people with um, and staying small and, and trying to shoehorn these businesses together is never going to work move let go move towards what you feel most passionate about when you feel inspired when you feel on purpose when you're passionate that is when it makes your heart sing and that is where your true niche is. Again, remember, not just for marketing, but how it makes you feel inside, okay? It's, it's having that fire in your belly every single morning when you get up going, this is what I'm going to do. This is my mission. This is what I'm going to help people with and nothing is going to stop me. That will, you know, <laughs> that fire in your belly, that passion will fuel you forever, and that's amazing. That's the staying power of your business. And as we all know, persistence and consistency is the key to success. And so when you have that alignment, persistence and consistency won't disappear because you will feel so on purpose and you'll know exactly why it is that you're here to do what you want to do. And at the end of the day, a whole reason why we're doing this is to help other people. And you can't help other people if you're helping them with stuff that really doesn't set you on fire. There's no point. So this is why it's so important to realize that you and your ideal client are one. You are connected. You want the same things out of life. And when you start talking about the things that you want out of life, that resonates with them and it attracts them to you. So go out there and look at what it is that you value most in life, what it is that you want out of life, because you will find a whole tribe of people out there who are all working towards the same thing. And one last thing that I'm going to mention on this is that we can get really caught up in this whole journey of your ideal client. We start trying to take responsibility for their whole life because we feel like we haven't got 100% success. Now, let me tell you, you will never, ever reach 100% success because our benchmark will always keep rising. We enter one area and then we go, oh, that's great. Right. What am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? So perfection doesn't actually exist. It's a myth. So don't get caught up in, oh, well, I need to have, you know, I don't know, I need to be earning 120K a year in order to start coaching. That's just ridiculous. Okay. Don't start taking responsibility for the whole client journey. Focus in what it is you're an expert in. What have you achieved? And never underestimate what you achieve. Because as soon as we reach for it and we get there, we start devaluing it because we've got it. Okay? When it's away from us, it's like all oh, this lovely shiny object we need to get to. And suddenly, as soon as we have it, we go, great, again, what's next? But we devalue what we've got. But don't forget all of those clients who are five, six, ten steps behind that are still looking at this lovely shining thing that you're devaluing. Okay? Don't devalue that gold that you're holding in your hands that you have reached. You only need to be a few steps ahead of your client. You don't need to be 10 years ahead. So try not to get caught up with it. And sometimes we think, oh, okay, so for instance, I'm going to help them um, 
find clarity on their purpose okay once they found their purpose oh no they're going to have to start a business i'm going to have to help them with their business plan and then once they've had their business plan um they need to find a premises and i don't know how to do that but that's what i'm going to need to do no you don't have to do all of that that is the point of niching it's looking at what you are best at doing and focusing in on those skills and what you love to do ditch what you don't want to do and do what you love forget the shoulds shoulds will always hold you back always work towards what you want to do not what you think you should do move towards your bliss what makes you feel good because that is where you will enjoy what you're working with and if you're not enjoying it then what's the point that's the whole reason of becoming an entrepreneur becoming a coach is to enjoy what you're doing so I hope that's helped everybody with, uh, you know, helping them to sort of get to grips with what their niche is and, you know, looking at their ideal clients. Does anyone have any questions? I'm just going to check the chat box down below. What have we got here? Uh, da, da, da. Sanai is awesome. I have questions. Amazing, Sanai. Um, do we have, Sanai said, I've evolved and I've, I'm now feeling confused. Oh, hang on. I'm feeling confused. Glory need to mute herself. I'm so confused. <laughs> Sanai, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. And ask the <laughs> yeah. So I've said I've evolved, and now I'm feeling confused. And then Glory popped in from the gym, so I was like, "Glory, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so, <laughs> what's the question?" Um, that was brilliant. Absolutely, I've taken oh. loads of notes because I'm at this point where I'm the evolved person. So um, my niche was, as you know, the, the niche whisperer. I helped people get very clear on defining how their story has created this purpose, their, their journey that they're on now. Um, I've been doing that for 18 months. And as you know, late last year, I started to feel this kind of like grinding halt in my emotions, my passion, everything seemed to go a bit off. Since then, I've discovered how, I am, how I've evolved. And I'm still, so what you said at the end there was great. I'm still trying to cling. There's a fear there of letting go of the good to actually step into the great, which was what something that came up um, just before Christmas. I thought that's what's going on here. So I am confused about um, getting completely clear on this new avatar, this new ideal client. Um, because if I think about my last two clients before the kind of the breaks came in, on in my business, my last two clients felt like my absolute ideal clients. These two women were um, not brand new newbie, left the nine to five looking for a um, to start up a coaching business. Um, they were women who already had had businesses before, same as you actually, Jen, had had businesses before and to a level of success. And they wanted to move into coaching. So, yes, they were new coaches, but they weren't new business women. So they had some amount of additional tenacity. They were stronger. They had some more about them. And I loved them. And the work I did with them was more around expanding the mind. Because my kind of one of my new realizations is your net worth is never greater than your self-image. So for me, the work I did that I really loved and these women were saying, you've changed my life, was around expansion. Because when you're bigger, you can receive more. So it's more mindset now. Yeah. So where I was trying to fit in with, well, where was I and wh where do I fit in in that part of the journey? How was that me? So then I looked at when I invested in um, the mindset coach, Becky, I, there was no struggle. I loved my business. I was doing really well, but I'd hit a, hit a ceiling and I wanted to go bigger. A ceiling of what? Uh, upper limiting income. Okay. So I couldn't seem to break this upper limit in my income. So I wanted more. I wanted to know what it took to up level. So I was seeking strategy. So knowing Becky had hit millions, multi-millionaire coach, I hired her to show me the strategy, to teach me. She didn't teach me anything, but she expanded my mind and that was what I needed. So now I want to kind of be that, turn around and do that. But I'm struggling to hit on people's pain points because I didn't feel in any pain. I yeah so that's 
I guess there's still a struggle there, isn't there? There's still a struggle of I want to earn more, but I can't. Mm. And I don't know why. What is it that I'm not doing, seeing, being that isn't enabling me to hit that, like you say, to move past the ceiling? Mm. So but I'm feeling like that doesn't feel good to you. It doesn't feel enough. Aha, okay. And, and it's still... Um, and I still love doing the niche work. And this is the other part that I love that in that light bulb moment. So I still want to talk to people about how I can help them define their niche. So th this is where I'm confused. You know, I don't actually know what my question is because <laughs> I'm, I'm that confused. So I feel good about what I'm doing. I'm talking about, um, you know, mindset a lot more about success, how about expansion but I'm unclear on exactly who I'm talking to because I still want to draw in those newer coaches because I know how powerfully I can help them. Well, this is it. This is the thing is that you can help them. Is there a want to do it or is there a feel like you should? It's not a should. It's still very passionate. Um, I think it's, I almost think that's still the first part of the journey, even when it comes to expanding your mindset. I still think that's the first part of the journey. Um, what I was just thinking now is that from what you've been saying is that when you evolve, it is almost a little bit like starting again in a way. You're yeah. kind of refreshing. And so whilst you're, you know, people are going to be evolving their niche just as you are. Mm -hmm. So is it not about finding the niche right at the very beginning, but reconnecting them back to their passion? Because this whole period of up-leveling is so hard and confusing for people they yeah. don't know that it is about that whole letting go of the old and letting it evolve and letting it move on um and no, I, I don't know whether it is or not and how good that feels to you but potentially it could be about helping people through this stage of evolution of doing what they're doing really well making the money they need to make but you know is this it well no it isn't it isn't and that's kind of what you felt a little while ago wasn't it mm -hmm. like this can't just be it and it isn't it there's more to come you know, you've got to reconnect to your niche, you've got to reconnect to your passion and where, where that's taking you. Mm. But that, I don't know whether that requires you to evolve in your journey a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think what's come up is a fear of thinking there's so many new coaches out there, that's a really easy target market, but it's harder to find people that are achieving a level of success that recognise that they want to invest more. Aha, okay, yeah. that's, yeah, that's the definite fear, isn't it? Of, again, yeah. again, You've built this pot up of, in this tribe of people who are at the beginning stages. Yeah. And so it's almost like building, starting to build a new tribe of a different type of client. And that fear again is creeping in of lack. Mm. Oh, there's not enough of those people around. Yeah. It's easy to find new coaches because they're searching. They're like, they're searching, they're hungry. Whereas my people are, are not searching as much. I don't think. Well, that, that I think, and the mindset change needs to happen because again if we look at the journey of the client you know we can't tell, take convince people that they need to move on we need to pick people who are in that searching place ah got it yeah and you're so right. i think you're holding yourself back in your mind because that by saying that they're not searching yeah you're right you're yeah creating a lack of clients there already yeah bang on yeah it's what you said right at the beginning your people have got to be ready to move on so they are actually seeking and you were uh, Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> you were searching, so there'll be more yeah. people out there like you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you. Right. Thank no, no worries tonight. Thank you for your question. Who else have we got? Um, da -da 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 -da. I'll go back up to the beginning. All right, Sophia. I'll go on. <laughs> oh, go on. Do you want to read it out or say it in person? Yeah, so what I wrote was, I feel that my niche needs to be aligned with what I offer as packages. Because I have niche down and I feel I need to reduce my packages, yeah, mm -hmm. um, what kind of suggestions do you have around this, Jen? Um, what, reducing your packages? Yeah, I'm reducing my packages to three. Um, because I had too many packages, mm -hmm. and I've been speaking about it <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> They're nice, I know. Um, I feel that I'm offering too much like for example you go to my website and i've got like millions of things that i can do 
but there are things in there that I actually don't want to do them anymore. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think as a creator, we can create loads of stuff and we kind of do that thing where we hoard and then we go, look how much stuff I've got. And by having loads of stuff, we think that it appears to other people like we know our stuff because we've got loads of stuff to offer. Therefore, that we must be good because we've got all these things. And I think you're exactly right. You do need to like reduce it back but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to ditch them just reduce it back visibly because one thing that I've learned in my journey is that when I was um, relying on just I kind of created this amazing package and I still love it the awaken the coach I absolutely adore it however I was relying on it I threw my all into it it's all bells all whistles singing or dancing package but I was like here it is here it is here it is here it is so when you reduce back too much people will get bored of the same stuff and they need to see that you have a range of, of different products to offer ranging from free to sort of mid-range to the higher end packages so I don't think it's about reducing it um, right back but just doing what you did with me scheduling in where your packages go in your time in the timeline um and bringing those out and actually looking at them so don't necessarily hoard them and then don't look at them when you know six months time you go i'm going to bring this one out done actually looking at what you had created six months ago making sure that it still fits in line with what you're doing and where you were going and if it doesn't then ditch it because if it's not right at this present moment it's no good and create as you go rather than create loads of stuff and then dish it all out at once. But don't rely on the same things over and over. Keep yeah, that creative yeah. flow. Because I think for um, when you create, it's, you know, when we've tapped into that inspiration, it's great. And you've got to just keep mo- moving with it. And like I said, your, your niche is going to evolve. So, you know, don't hoard anymore. Maybe stop that le- the method of behavior of just creating and hoarding. But you're all into what you're feeling most inspired to at the time. And then. And I think you, you um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. And I think you just said something that really resonated with me. You said, I need to reduce it back visibly. Yes. And that actually, that takes me to like, I'm a visibility GPS coach. And. I should be doing that to my packages too. So that was, you know, that's my uh, aha moment here. Do you know what I mean? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just making even it simple, isn't it? Making it simple for people to know what you're about, what's going on for you at the moment. So, yeah, so I'm working on it this week and I'm going through a lot of changes. So that's, you know, that's really good. Thank you so much. And your presentation was amazing, like Thank always. You. Yeah, thank you very much. Do we have any more, do you know, Sophia? Have we got any more questions? I haven't been able to keep up. Uh, Oksana, do you have any questions, darling? Um, Glory's left. Okay. I can't see anything from from Oksana. I don't know if Oksana has wants to. Do you want to come out? Come in, Oksana. Just needs to unmute. Yeah, I'm, I'm muted myself. Now, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Jan. It was really great. And uh, I took some notes as well, so we'll follow through with them. Uh, my problem is that I, um, I am sort of combining my two roles as a coach, as an as uh, executive recruiter. So it's a little bit hard for me to um, combine them in an, an effective way. So... I'll have to probably do think it's really going to be uh, difficult to establish myself as an expert uh, helping people to um, know what it is that they want and just show them how to get there, you know, as far as their careers are concerned. But at the same time, I, I kind of, I have really passion for recruitment as well but for some specific businesses that I really believe in and um, some clients that I actually have very good relationship with so why do you find why do you think you'll find it hard to position yourself as an expert how, I don't know how to combine two basically you know in my presentation of who I am on social media and um, 
you know, because I'm serving corporate corporate clients, but at the same time, every time I speak to some, you know, to candidates, I can see how I can help them, how they actually um, not um, presenting their skill set in the right way. They don't communicate it in the right way, so they can do a lot better and they can achieve better results in their career, whatever they want to do to move on or to kind of, you know, find a different job or um, start something new. Well, I guess you could think of it in two different ways. I'm quite hard nosed in terms of you pick one thing whilst okay. you're making it. Once you've made it, then you can start looking to branch out because once you're known for something, it makes it then easier because you're well known anyway to then start looking at other areas. However, looking at the situation that you've got, you've got a you've got like a want situation and a need situation. So you know that your clients want a certain thing. But then you look at them and you know that they need to do this to achieve this, right? Okay, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, it's going back to uh, are they ready, right? Exactly. And, 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 and not even that. What they can do for them, then they can, you know, use me in a different way. Or exactly. And them. also, you know, you, we're selling them what they want, giving them what they need. So, okay. you know, whilst we talk about, you know, yes, we will absolutely get you to this result. But, you know, in order to do this, this is what we, the, the journey that we have to go through. And it's showing your expertise in terms of, it's almost showing the clients, giving them those breakthroughs and those aha moments in your marketing and your education, educating your clients to know that, yes, they absolutely want this. But did you know that unless you do X, Y, and Z, you're never going to achieve this? So it's all about the education. So perhaps, it's you know because at the end of the day you need to help them achieve the results and you're talking about you're wanting to do the how and you're almost looking at ditching the result but actually the result is excellent what you want is to give them what what's their tangible result that they want okay okay thank you for that so yeah i have to listen to that again basically. <laughs> that's okay so don't ever ditch the result if, if that's the result that you want to help your clients with the fab keep the results it's how you help them sorry my screen's just flopped off um it's how you help them achieve that goal is what makes your heart sing right it's looking at all the other things that they need to work through yeah. if it was as easy as just going here's the result a to b then you're not you're not doing a coach's job right so in a way it is combining as far as i can tell obviously i've only had a very short snippet of what you've had to say sure. but yeah okay. don't ever ditch the result keep the result okay. can i say Thank something you. to oksana okay. yes so oksana yeah I put on a chat you can save the chat as well but um so basically uh companies if you want to keep within the recruitment executive um coaching companies are looking for coaches to come in and help motivate their employees. Mm. So if you still are very passionate about that recruitment side, um, you can still do that. And it's, there's a need for that because people, uh, companies want people to be motivated and productive so that they are profitable. Okay. Um, and the best way is to keep the employees in, you know, um, for their retention rate, not to go down sort of thing. And one thing that um, has happened to me back in 2014 was that the company that I was working for, Aerospace MOD Company, they've done a lot of redundancies, okay? But... Um, so after the redundancies, one of the reps that dealt with the redundancies, they've actually um, hired a company, an external company, to come in, right, yeah. and help people with the process of the redundancy. Yeah, it's called uh, old placement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like placement, yeah. like how to um, be more visible on LinkedIn, how to set it all up. So they've done that. So companies are looking for that. Uh, and not just, um, you, know, see, you know, how to structure a CV, um, how to basically, after being 
working on that company for so many years, people kind of lose track, right? And they weren't even on LinkedIn, the majority of them. You know, they're in their 40s, they're in their 50s. You know, they should be looking at retirement soon, not, um, you know, getting a new job. Yeah, I know what you're saying, and I've been looking at different options, but I think my passion is still with, um, you know, when, 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 you know, like Sana was um, kind of guiding me through uh, where I hit that point when, you know, what are my options? Uh, this doesn't make sense. I'm not enjoying the days to think about, you know, what I love in my life. So I got to that point, you know, when I was like lost completely, you know, so, so I, I want to help people who were in my situation two years ago uh, to really find, you know, what they're really good at, what they want to, how they can deploy that, how they can kind of reignite your, their life and find that passion in, and fulfillment and in which direction, you know, and point them in the right direction. So that's more what I lo- would love to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you. I think you need to, yeah, definitely stick with where you're most feel most passionate about. Absolutely, because otherwise, like you say, without the passion, there's no yeah. point doing it. Is yeah. It? Thank you, lady. It's a great suggestion, though, Sophia. And that's something that I'm looking to actually do. Is um, oh bless, Sophia, so to mute yourself. Is actually looking at um how I can work with other businesses and corporates as well, because whilst I, you know, want to work with my ideal client. I think it would be silly for us to ignore other areas potentially that we can get, you know, gain income streams from, but just make sure your focus is where the passion is and put, you know, the most of your time and energy into where you want it to go. So fabulous. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Um, Sophia, I don't know whether you're, you're able to unmute yourself at all, um, but it's been fab to see everybody. And yes, there can we you go. You're on the other side. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, sorry, I had to unmute myself because um, my puppy start barking. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And I'll put the recording in a group. And like I said, I'm going to create a playlist on YouTube so we can all share this awesomeness. Excellent. I'll stop recording now. Excellent. I can't.